All right, hello everybody from, as you can see, the coast. I love the coast, I love being here, the ocean breeze, the smells, everything. But doing photography here can be very, very challenging, as I've been experiencing in this trip of ours. We're gonna be at this beautiful place for three days, just three days, but in that short period of time, I did some things right when it comes to photography and many things wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna share those things with you. These are my do's and don'ts of photography at the coast. The coast is windy and wet, so it goes without saying, we need proper shoes. The water can be really cold, especially in the winter, so if you are going to be getting in and out of the water to take photos, staying as dry as possible can make a huge difference. When facing higher waters, though, the best option is just to go barefoot, whatever it takes to keep those shoes dry. Just don't be surprised if the water is freezing. Going barefoot also means potentially stepping on sharp and rugged rocks that can be painful, so don't leave your shoes behind when you take them off like I did. Bringing a towel to clean yourself is also a must, especially off-season when the showers don't work. I didn't bring one. It's not just shoes, though. The grown clothes can ruin our day of photography. The weather kept changing really quick on this day. It went from rainy, windy and cold morning to a calm, sunny and rather hot afternoon. Wearing layers is the answer here, so we can adapt to the conditions as they change. One thing I find really useful to have is this, uh, I guess, rain jacket or whatever you want to call it. This is built in in this backpack and it's made for the rain, of course, but I find it very useful for the beach or whatever situation where your backpack might get very dirty, like uh, or mud, or if it's very sandy, like here, the desert, whatever. Uh, I always have it out like this, so I protect my camera a little bit more. And you never know when it's gonna come in handy. A few days ago, when I was photographing that underwater town, I fell in the lake. I fell on my back, on my butt. I had the backpack on, so thanks to having for uh, having this uh, thingy on and out like it is right now, while well, it protected my backpack and everything stayed dried. So yeah, very, very convenient uh, to have. Perhaps it's a good idea to use zoom lenses so you don't have to switch them all the time. But if you do have to change lenses, try to have the sensor exposed to the elements as little as possible. And lastly, do not ever leave your camera bag behind unattended anywhere close to the ocean. I lost an expensive camera this way in the past, and since then I try to keep it on most of the time, or at the very least, closed and ready to grab in a hurry. Even though I might have taken a few pictures of signs, uh, when it comes to taking photographs at the coast, I tend to do mostly long exposures. It's because I just find it really difficult to create images where the choppy water is competing for attention with everything else in the frame. I also love the contrast between the texture of rocks and sand against the uh, textureless surface the water turns into in a long exposure image. Of course, this means I need a tripod, and the tripod needs to be as stable as possible. Wind and wet sand are your enemies at the coast. To fight the latter, we can use rocks. Not perfect, but it really helps.
When it comes to the wind, there is not much we can do. Perhaps naively, I try to protect my camera with my own body and clothes, but I'm sure vibrations still happen on the tripod legs. At least I feel like I'm doing something. Because so many things can go wrong, I usually take several shots of the same composition, not only trying to avoid those blurry shots due to uh, vibrations, but also because with the ocean and moving clouds, you just never know what you're going to get. Ideally, we can find a place where we can shelter a little bit from the wind, like I did at this viewpoint. Because of the strong winds, I had to get a bit more creative to get an image there. This is absolutely beautiful. You can't see it right now, but the moon is setting behind me. The sun is rising in front of me. We have very dark clouds coming from the ocean. The camera is doing super weird things with the white balance because it cannot understand all these colors happening at the same time. And even if you shoot in black and white, like I do, it is always totally worth it to get out early and stay out until late just not because of the colors but the light the light is just amazing at this time of the day just beautiful we should seek those magic moments that can happen at the coast be out there for sunrise and stay out for sunset you can run into scenes as breathtaking as this one And even though I wasn't able to make good images during that time, just experiencing that moment was totally worth it. In the end, the more time we spend outside, the more chances we have to find something beautiful. I had completely forgotten about the full moon happening during those days. And I was caught by surprise by a beautiful moonrise on the second day. That gave me an idea for a shot. I didn't know whether it was going to work out or not, and how. All right. So I've been running the whole day, improvising, because the weather kept changing. I kept changing my mind. And now I think I have an idea for a shot. So we are here, back at the cathedral speech, and we need to hurry up. We only have 10 minutes to set the camera and the tripod, because the moon is about to rice and that's what I want to capture. Let's go, let's go, hurry up. All right, so I'm gonna use the app I've talked about many times in this uh, channel. It's called Sun Surveyor. It's just to know where the moon is gonna rise because my idea is to, um, actually it looks like I'm at the right spot the moon is supposed to rise somewhere in between those cliffs. It's like a, they form like an alley, the shape of an alley. And my idea is to have the moon 
at the end of that alley and lighting up all the, the cliffs here. It's probably not going to work out that well, but you gotta try. There are also some clouds in the horizon, so I don't know if we're gonna get a moon at all. But again, you gotta try. That's why we're here and uh, I'm just crossing all the fingers I have in my body, I guess. So the shot didn't really work out as I was expecting, but witnessing that moment was something truly special. One of the highlights of my career as a photographer. I just wish the videos and images did it justice, but they are nothing near what I saw there in person. Yeah. Holy. Look, happened quickly. Anyway, there is a very fine line between magical moments and miserable conditions. They can come hand by hand. And that's what happened the next day. Ah, <sighs> we made it back to the car just in time. It's really picked up out there now. We'll see how, how long it lasts, but meanwhile we are enjoying breakfast. When we find ourselves in bad conditions, we should just retreat and not fight it. We should have foods and drinks in the car. We should rest and wait for when the magic is back. And of course, we cannot put ourselves in risky situations ever. Everyone has a different comfort zone when it comes to risk, but don't be reckless and don't push yourself too far. After all, one of the best ways to make more good images is to live longer. So don't do anything stupid. Okay. Enough. That's probably a uh, don't. It wasn't unsafe, but it was definitely very close to the cliff. Probably borderline pushing it a little bit. So again, probably a don't. There is no photo worth risking your life. Uh, so, yeah. so on the other side of these rocks is the part of the beach I haven't been to yet. So I just uh, need to wait a little bit longer. It is still half an hour to low tide. As you can see, you can't really pass. So at the other side, there are three arches that are supposed to be very cool and the best part of this beach. And I would really like to take a photo of them. I tried a couple days ago, but they weren't really accessible and they were still full of water. So hopefully it can happen today. If not, well, I'll have to come back another time. Watch out for the tides. The landscape can look dramatically different depending on the tide. At this location, the beach is just simply gone during high tide. Another reason to be careful as well, you don't want to get stuck somewhere because of the rising tide. I am so close, but so far at the same time. I mean, I don't see a way to get there without killing myself 10 times because these rocks right here are so, so slippery. I just, I don't know. It's just way too far. And I can see that the arches there, but they have water. So I don't think I can find a, a place for me to take a photo. And it's super windy. My idea was to take a long exposure there. That is not going to happen today. It's not going to happen here. As I said, this is a big do not do, do not attempt, because I could get hurt really bad here for maybe a photo that doesn't even work. And even if it works, as I said many times, it's not worth the risk. This is way too much for me. You could be pushing it too far. So I'm going back. Well, it is a real bummer because that's the image I had in mind for this trip. And I thought I had a shot today, this morning, at making it because the tide was going to be the lowest this morning. But it is miserable here. The tide is not low enough. It's super windy, it's rainy, it's really cold. So that's not going to happen. But hey, 
these places are still beautiful 